Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and today we're seeing a replay. Well the video file of this replay has been cooling its heels on my hard drive for a couple of weeks now. I'd actually forgotten that I had it and then, well, yesterday I was going through the video footage that I have and I saw this and I thought to myself, how the hell did I forget about this? This battle has got it all. Action, drama, mystery, suspense, comedy, hell, there's even a bit of romance towards the end. <laughs> it's, um... <laughs> uh, don't worry, it is two brothers, but we're not talking middle channel YOLO rush here. This battle is slightly more intelligent than that. Just not by much. <laughs> I mean, it's... <laughs> uh, this is Dab's V12, by the way, sailing the Miyoko, the Japanese Tier 7 cruiser. I do like the Miyoko. I think it's a very solid Tier 7 cruiser. It's a definite improvement over the Auber at Tier 6. I mean, I kind of like the Auber as well. But I can see why people are keen to get past it and get to the Miyoko. Because the Miyoko takes what was good about the Auber, those 203mm guns, and just makes them better. For a start, it's got more of them. And that was always the chief downside to the Auber, the fact that while it did have good guns, it only had six of them. On the Miyoko, you've got two extra turrets for a total of 10 203mm guns. And the high explosive shells on this thing pack a nasty punch. I mean, the armor piercing isn't bad, but the high explosive is probably going to be the major source of your damage output. The ship also has longer range for the guns, and twice the number of torpedo launchers. Although each launcher has one less tube, it's still more torpedoes overall, and the torpedo firing arcs are better on the Miyoko too. You still can't fire torpedoes ahead, but there's a much, much better arc to the rear and the side. Overall, if you like the Auber, you're going to love the Miyoko. Now, for the first part of this battle, we're going to be watching Dabs here exploiting the most overpowered island in all of World of Warships. It's not that one over there to the right. It's not that one up ahead in the middle. It's that one coming into view over on the left of the screen. It's nice and wide, so you can park even a ship as long as the Miyoko behind it without being seen. And it's pretty flat and not very tall. So you don't have to be an American destroyer or light cruiser in order to lob shells over the top of it and rain death and destruction down upon enemy ships on the other side of it. First, of course, he has to make it there without getting obliterated by that Nagato, and we're good. Enemy Acasta was keeping him spotted, but has just been chased out of the cap circle by a pair of friendly destroyers. So he's undetected again, and he's free to resume his course towards the most overpowered island in all of World of Warships. Amazingly, neither team appear to be rushing the middle. I don't quite know what to think about that. I feel almost disappointed. What's going on? Does nobody watch my videos? <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. This was actually recorded a couple of weeks before uh, my latest video of Flambas doing YOLO rush in the Leander. That explains it. Right, anyway, he is in position. Team, we've got this. From here, he is able to fire clean over the island without being spotted. Which is really, really bad news for that Helena. Now, that is just a light cruiser, personally, and yep, he has. I would be switching to armor piercing now. Although it looks like he's given a little bit too much lead there. Not entirely sure why, but the Helena appears to have slowed down while broadside on right in front of the guns of a whole bunch of ships. So Dab adjusts his aim and with the armor piercing loaded. Yeah, that'll do. Now he's also knocked out the Helena's engine. If it wasn't obvious by the fact that we saw the engine disabled indicator pop up, you can also see the smoke and flames coming out of the funnels, which means that none of those shots are going to hit. And Dabs realises his error and readjusts his aim. The Helena is not using damage control for some bizarre reason and is instead slowing to a halt, broadside on. <laughs> hey, I don't know. I just work here. <laughs> Hang on, what's that Kirov doing? Kirov, what are you doing? I mean, the Helen is dead, we know that. But what is that Kirov doing? 
there's a Nagato, a Queen Elizabeth, a Koenig, a Nacasta, and a Miyoko out there. And rather than taking advantage of the world's most overpowered island, the Kirov, which I'll remind you is a tier 5 cruiser that isn't the fur attacker and therefore is made entirely out of citadels, matches and gasoline, is sailing out right in front of them. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me remind you, as if you needed any further reminding, that brains are not required in order to play free-to-play online multiplayer games like World of Warships. As demonstrated, by that guy in the Kirov. I mean, I don't know what he thinks he's doing. Perhaps he just wants to get close enough to the Nagato to hit him with his torpedoes. <laughs> I don't know, it's as, it's as good an explanation as any. Of course, it's a Kirov, so that means he has to get within four kilometres. So, yes, good luck with that. If that is his plan, I don't rate his chances of success very highly. Or perhaps it's just that he doesn't know how to play and he doesn't like the matchmaking. Top tip, be behind this island. Look how well it's working for dabs. <sighs> I think the Kirov's life expectancy is now measured in the seconds rather than the minutes. He's now been forced to turn broadside on in front of a Nagato at... Well, it's not quite point-blank range, but it's definitely not Kirov torpedo range. Man, just look at them all farming damage on him. Yep, he's dead. So, Dabs' team are now down three ships. The first victim was their Geniser now, a top-tier battleship, who managed to get himself torpedoed and sunk by an Acasta. Yes, you heard me right the first time. An Acasta. The British Tier 5 destroyer that's armed with 6 km range torpedoes and gets spotted from nearly 7 kilometers away. No, I, I didn't think Acastas were even allowed to do that either. The Acasta was swiftly joined by a Mutsuki-class destroyer who was shot up by an Auber, I think, on the other side of the map. And then, of course, the Kirov went to the bottom as well. Now, I don't know about the Mutsuki, but I think at times like this it's important if you try to look at things in context. Always try to look for the silver lining. I mean, sure, the team could probably have used not losing the points that those ships represented, but at the same time, a Gneiser now, who YOLOs and gets torpedoed by an Acasta, and a Kirov, who drives out in front of the biggest guns on the enemy team. Losing players like that actually means that, on average, your team just got a whole lot smarter. You see, I do think it's important that you always try to look on the bright side. Because, let's face it, neither of those two guys were going to be much use to the team alive. And the fact that they're now dead means that your chances of accidentally getting team killed by careless torpedoes fired by teammates has probably decreased dramatically as well. You see? Got to keep looking on the bright side. Now, unfortunately for Dabs, that Gneiser now killing a caster over there is actually spotting him. And the downside of the world's most overpowered island is that if you're spotted from the flank, the fact that you can shoot over it means enemy ships on the other side, if they're far enough away from it, can shoot over it and hit you as well. So that little bugger is going to have to be dealt with. Dabs is reversing, so once he's dealt with this guy, the enemy ships on the other side of the island won't have a direct line of fire. And that was a fairly significant hit, because as well as knocking out a gun turret, it also disabled his engine, which has forced the Acaster over there to pop his damage control. And while Dabs does not kill him, he forces him to use his smoke, which means the Acasta is no longer spotting him. Unfortunately, they've lost a friendly destroyer as a result of that guy's spotting. Shot at and killed by the Koenig-class battleship over there. Now, there are definitely more ships out there than just the Koenig, but because the cyclone has closed in and visibility is down to 8 kilometers, that's the only one that's in visibility range of the Icarus-class destroyer who's spotting him from just over to the left of the screen. There he is. The Acasta is still inside the cap circle, and the torpedoes haven't quite made it there yet. Unfortunately, they've just lost another ship. There are now six of them against ten enemies. The enemy team control two caps. They're flipping a third. And unless something changes drastically in the very near future, the enemy team are going to win in around about three minutes. Now, remember all of this later on, because it's an indication of just how badly Dabs' team sucked. Because believe it or not, up until now, they're not even fighting a whole enemy team. They're actually losing badly uh, to a team of 11 enemy ships, because one of them is AFK. 
and is going to be AFK the whole match. And in fact, things are going to get worse before they get any better, because right now Dabs' team do at least control one of the capture points. Although that's not really saying much, because it's the one that they were gifted at the start of the game. <laughs> at least they've managed to hold... Oh, hang on. No, they haven't. The enemy team are flipping the last capture point as well. Well, bugger. It's at this point where somebody's going to have to do something pretty spectacular to turn this team around. And Dabs is being requested to come to the aid of the New Orleans-class heavy cruiser. We should see him any second now. He's making a move. There he goes. And he's asking Dabs for assistance. Now this is one hell of a dangerous move for even two heavy cruisers, because let's not forget, on the other side of that island, there's a Queen Elizabeth, there's a Koenig, and I'm pretty sure there's also another Miyoko. And we still don't know where that Acasta is. But while their chances are not good, the one thing I know for sure is they're not going to win this match by sitting behind an island and waiting for the enemy to come to them. So Dabs goes to the assistance of the New Orleans. There's the Koenig. High Explosive is what he has loaded, so High Explosive is what he fires. And it does do a few thousand damage, but unfortunately doesn't set any fires. And oh, bugger. There's the Acasta. Now remember, the Acasta's torpedoes have a 6 kilometer range, so he's not quite in torpedo range, but if he keeps sailing towards him, he's going to be. The Acasta starts to smoke up. And the only reason the Acasta does not launch torpedoes at Dabs is because he's just launched them at the New Orleans. Now look at the New Orleans position on the map, by the way, and remember that Dabs only came out here because the New Orleans was asking him for assistance. The New Orleans is ducking into cover <laughs> behind one of the islands. Gee, thanks, mate. Dabs now has the Queen Elizabeth, the Acasta, and the Koenig. And if he gets any closer, there's a Miyoko lurking at the back just outside of view range as well, all to himself. And this is where the Miyoko's torpedoes are going to come in handy. Because it can fire six of them to either side. Shots out. Kills the Acasta. Torpedoes away. And at this kind of range he can't possibly miss. Kills the Queen Elizabeth. There's the double strike. That just leaves the Koenig. He's thinking about going for the torpedoes from the other side. But let's wait until the Koenig fires. <laughs> that would probably be safer. And, actually, is he going to fire? Well, he set him on fire with some secondaries. At this kind of range, armor-piercing would punch right through the belt armor of that Koenig. The high explosive just shattered. But, well, he's got a lot to keep track of at the moment, so we'll let him get away with that one. But he is able to get the ship around. Both sets of torpedoes away from the port side. Continues the turn. He's outturned the Koenig's guns. He's driving the ship hard into the border. Gives him a little love tap with the high explosive shells on the way out and then the torpedoes finish the job. And I'm sure at this point Dabs is thinking two things. First, how the hell am I still alive? <laughs> and secondly, and most importantly, after four kills, a double strike and a high caliber award, how the hell are we still losing? To that Dabs, I can only reply, Welcome to online team-based multiplayer games. You must be new here. You've just taken your first steps into a very strange world where almost anything is possible. And oh look, there's the Miyoko. I told you there were four enemy ships out here. Okay, this is bad. That Miyoko has a lot more health. Dabs has high explosive loaded, so that's what he fires. The Miyoko returns fire and misses with every shot. Dabs switches to the armor piercing. The Miyoko obligingly turns to expose the full broadside of the ship, ensuring that these shells are going to do the maximum possible damage. But doing that means that Dabs is exposing a lot of broadside to... Well, it doesn't matter really, does it? <laughs> because he just ate a bunch of torpedoes fired by the friendly Icarus. Fantastic timing, by the way. And Dabs does thank the Icarus there in chat, because that Miyoko's guns would have been just about ready to fire. Although it's debatable whether the Miyoko was actually ever going to fire his guns, or whether or not he was just swinging the ship around in order to try to get torpedoes away. Let's just rewind the clock a little, because you might be thinking, well, what could that enemy Miyoko have done better? I mean, it's difficult to see what he could have done worse, but there is a way that he could have quite easily won that engagement. So here's where Dabs spots him, and where he spots Dabs. Now, at this point, if instead of turning that way, he had turned this way, 
and if necessary, grounded himself on that spit of land sticking out from the left-hand side of the island, okay, he wouldn't have been able to fire any torpedoes. But he never did get to fire any torpedoes, anyway. Grounding himself there would have meant that nobody would have been able to torpedo him, the Icarus wouldn't have even been able to shoot at him, and while he and Dabs would have been exchanging exactly the same amount of frontal firepower at each other, he would have started the gunfight with three times the amount of health that Dabs had, and would have probably only needed to have hit Dabs two or three times in order to sink him. And he certainly wouldn't have ate a whole bunch of armour-piercing shells in the broadside the way that he did. But he didn't, so he's dead. And Dabs now has a confederate to go with his high calibre and double strike, and yep, he's still losing. <laughs> Still losing to an enemy team, let us not forget, that is not actually a full enemy team. Of those four surviving enemy ships, one of them started the game AFK and is going to finish the game AFK. In fact, he's the one that momentarily spotted Dabs and in fact is spotting him now. And that's why Dabs has just popped his catapult fighter in an effort to get eyes on him. Well, we can see where the other three enemy ships are. That just leaves one enemy destroyer unaccounted for. It is, in fact, an AFK enemy destroyer. It's a tier 6, it's a Farragut, and there he is. Now, this isn't just damage farming on a hapless AFK player. I mean, Dabs doesn't necessarily realise at this point that the guy is AFK, although it's going to become very obvious very quickly. But even though he's not at the keyboard, he is still spotting you, so he does need to be dealt with. And that is a very, very pretty, shiny, and expensive and exclusive camouflage that that guy's using, or more accurately, not using. <laughs> so, <laughs> man, it sucks to be you. I mean, I don't know why he's AFK. There could be any number of perfectly legitimate reasons, and a whole bunch of illegitimate reasons. I mean, maybe he didn't like the matchmaking any more than the captain of the Kirov earlier, but either way, who knows, and thanks for the Kraken. Three enemy ships remaining, and none of them are AFK. There's an Alba, there's an Emerald, and there's an Eagle. And very shortly, for the third time in this battle, the enemy team are going to go over 900 points. And previously, every time the enemy team has gone over 900 points, Dabs has had to kill something, or several somethings. And it's only because Dabs has continued to keep killing ships that the enemy team hasn't won by now. Now, from here on in until the end of the match, I want you to just bear something in mind. These three surviving enemy ships, okay, when you witness the derpage <laughs> on display from now until the end of the battle, bear in mind that these are the guys who, while one ship down, thanks to that AFK Farragut, these are some of the players who have been comprehensively kicking the arse of Dabs' teammates for the last 17 minutes. Now, Dabs had the high explosive loaded there, which is unfortunate because the ABBA was showing in broadside, but he did manage to set a fire. Now, of course, he switched to the armour piercing and the ABBA is nose in. And of course, that's an ABBA. Dabs is in a Miyoko, so he's got more guns. And if the ABBA wants to bring more guns to the party, he's going to have to swing the ship around. And we've already seen how dangerous that can be. Nevertheless, he's going to give it a damn good try, even though it's only really bringing two extra guns to the fight. Unfortunately, he appears to get his A key mixed up with his D key because... Steering is hard, and drives his ship straight into an island that jumped at him out of the shadows, mugged him, and started going through his pockets for loose change. With the enemy team up to 929 points, Dabs attempts to get the kill on the Eagle, fails, switches back to the Alba, who's presumably still in shock from getting mugged by the island that jumped at him from out of nowhere, sets the Alba on fire, but they've just lost another ship. The enemy team are now up to 970 points, Dodges the Eagle's torpedoes, kills the Alba with his secondaries. There's the Close Quarters Expert Award. The enemy team are back down to 922 points, but there's still an Eagle and an Emerald out there. Although not for much longer. Because the Emerald torpedoes the Eagle. <laughs> and remember, boys and girls, this is the enemy team who've managed to go over 900 points up four times since the start of this match, despite being a ship down from the very start of the game. Now, what does that say about the average quality of the player on Dabs's team? There's the Emerald. You know, once again, if Dabs had actually been firing armor-piercing, 
he would probably have citadeled the crap out of that emerald. And that would definitely have been his seventh and final kill of the game. But, well, he's, he's done well enough so far. I think we're prepared to let him get away with that one. God knows he's done enough. So, what can we say about that that hasn't already been said? Other than, of course, congratulations, Dabs, well played, well done. Now please go and lie down because I suspect your back's hurting. It's almost as if every time I put up a video showing the utter stupidity of some of the players in World of Tanks and World of Warships, a small but significant segment of the player base seems to think, challenge accepted. <laughs> Hold my beer. Guys, seriously, slow down or you're going to do yourselves an injury. There is no prize for best idiot. Although, I don't know, maybe that's an idea for... Oh, actually, no, no, that's, that's a terrible idea. It's not like they actually need any more encouragement. Um, so, yes, let's just pretend I never said that. Dabs, well done, well played. Enjoy your rest, and uh, let us know when your back's better. <laughs> In the meantime, of course, as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.